Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm so sorry for yesterday. I had um, an issue, so I wasn't able to be on the session with you, but now I'm here and we are going to work on the topic that we have left. But uh, I just want to say something. Uh, right now it's raining so hard here and it's kind of complicated because I don't know if in some moments I'm going to have some troubles with my connection or something because um, it's kind of uh, surprising or even incredible uh, the way it's raining here because it's raining so so hard and it's kind of I don't know it's complicated but we're going to try to uh, work with the topics that we have for today so um, I'm going to share the screen with the uh, document but give me a moment, I'm going to see this one. Okay, I'm going to write the topic that we are going to see right now. Okay, let me share with you what is the topic for today. So we are going to continue with this kind of topics that are part of the grammatical um, issues or the grammatical things. So we are going to talk about this topic that is called quantifiers. We are going to know what are the quantifiers. We are going to see some examples. We are going to learn how to place these quantifiers in a statement. Um, we are going to see what is the importance of these quantifiers. And in some cases that you are like using these words when you are talking in English, but you are not like thinking about that this one is a quantifier. So we are going to see all of this information in this topic. Remember that uh, we are going to continue with this topic and then we are going to see if we have uh, some knowledge check that we are not um done with because I know that uh, there are some people that is uh, done with all of the exercises but we need to, to make like a, a, re a review of this one okay that's okay you can write on the chat when you need to, to say something so we are going to begin with this uh, topic and then we are going to or I think I'm we're going to work on the theory today and we are going to review or make reviews of the activities that we have on the platform because we are going to see something about the um, knowledge check that we have there. And also we are going to see uh, the topics that we are um, using for the midterm. And I know that many of you have completed the midterm, but uh, it is necessary that we have some ideas. Uh, okay. If you want to say something, you can write on the chat. Oh my God, it's like a very hard storm. And I don't know, it sounds kind of, of dangerous. Okay, we are going to begin with this topic that are the quantifiers. We are going to see the basic information about them. And then you are going to say, oh, I know those uh, words and I am using to express something in English. But we are going to see um, 
what are all of these? Because this is a group of words that we are going to use when we are uh, talking about quantities. Remember that we are talking about quantities and we were talking about the countable and uncountable nouns. This topic is also part of this um part of this kind of topics that are part of the countable and uncountable nouns. So what is the definition of quantifiers? The definition is that they are a type of determiners Okay, in this case, we have the definition. They are a type of determiner uh, which denote imprecise quantity. In this case, this one is the important idea here. Or in this case, this is the main idea of this definition. We are going to mark this one, imprecise quantity. So in this case, we are not sure about the quantity of something. And it says that they differ from numbers or numerals which indicate precise quantities. Estamos hablando de que estas palabras que vamos a conocer nosotros, que son los quantifiers, eh, hablan de una cantidad imprecisa. Podemos decir, ah, estamos hablando de cantidades, podemos utilizar números. Pero en este caso no podemos utilizar los números como tal, ya que los números sí nos dan cantidades precisas. And with the quantifiers, you don't have this precise quantity. You just have like um, an imprecise quantity and you are not sure about the quantity of something. So in this case, it is like very different from numbers. And we are going to see the most common examples. And we are going to see the words. In this case, the quantifiers are words that talk about quantity. But in this case, imprecise quantity. Okay, here we are going to see what are the words that we are going to use in this category. In this case, we have some, any, much, many, a lot, a few, several, and we have also enough. So in this case, you already use these words when you are talking in English. So they are not a new kind of words. We are using uh, these words in a statement. So they are not like um, something that we don't know. So you can make sentences with these words or maybe you are expressing something using these words. So. Here we have the list of words or the list of quantifiers, in this case, the most common quantifiers that we use in English. We use some, we use any, we use much, we use many, a lot, a few, several, and enough when we are talking about a quantity. Now, we are going to see three different 
types of quantifiers. We are going to divide these words in three main groups. One of these is the neutral quantifiers. The second one is quantifiers or large quantity and quantifiers of a small quantity. De estas palabras vamos a dividirlas en tres grupos principales. El neutral, los quantifiers que hablan de cantidades grandes y los quantifiers que hablan de cantidades pequeñas. So in this case, we are going to have three main categories to use these quantifiers or these words. So we have here the three main groups. And we are going to begin with the first one. And in this case is the neutral quantifiers. Okay, in this case, we have some, any, several, a number of, and enough. In this case, we're going to add some other uh, quantifiers that we don't have on the first list. Because in the first case, we have just the most common quantifiers that we use in English. So when we are um, marking these three main groups of quantifiers, we are going to add more words that we can use on those categories. So in this case, in neutral categories or in neutral quantifiers, you are going to find words as several, a number of, and different uh, words. We are going to add kind of uh, more words that we can use in each category or in each group of quantifiers. Okay, in this case, some and any are both quantifiers in articles. So in this case, they can function as quantifiers, but also they can function as articles. You know that we have this kind of, um, like, how can we say this, this word? Um, they are very... Um, it is not complex. Uh, it is another word, but I, I am not uh, like in this moment, I don't have the word in my mind. But in English, we have different words that can function as different things. The same word can function as a, maybe an adverb, an adjective, an article, an, uh, different things. And in this case, we have this one. Some and any can function as quantifiers, but also they can function as articles, depending on the use or, and depending in what is the action or what is the thing that we are doing in that moment. So in that case, we can have this kind of words that can have different functions, but are the same word and even has the same meaning, but they are functioning in 
different categories depending on the action or the thing that we are doing in that moment. So in this information, we have something very, very interesting. And this one said that um, in many contexts, some is the plural indefinite article, and this one is the plural of A and N. Nosotros ya conocemos este artículo. Es bastante conocido porque lo utilizamos en diferentes oraciones, ya que se refiere a un una. Pero el some lo vamos a utilizar como el plural de ese artículo. Pero es más seguido o lo usamos más eh, cuando hablamos de una cantidad indefinida. O sea, cuando no tenemos un número exacto de algo. Y por eso es que se evalúa o es por eso que lo utilizamos como un quantifier. No tanto como un artículo, sino como un quantifier porque no tenemos una, una cantidad exacta sobre alguna cosa de la que estamos hablando. Some is used also in affirmative statements. It is replaced with any in negative and interrog interrogative context. Entonces, vamos a utilizar el some cuando tengamos oraciones afirmativas, positivas, pero lo vamos a reemplazar el some por el any cuando nuestra oración sea negativa o se convierta en una pregunta. So we are going to see some examples. I've got some apples in my basket and some water in my bottle. I haven't go uh, I haven't got any apples in my basket nor any water in my bottle. The second one is the negative form of the first statement. So in this case, as we read in the uh, paragraph, 
when you have affirmative sentences or affirmative statements, you are going to use some. But when you have negative statements, you are going to use any, like we are going to see in this second example. Next one, have you got any apples in your basket? In this case, we are using a question. So in this case, we're going to use any instead of some. Ok, aquí podemos ver eh, cómo vamos a transformar nuestra oración positiva a negativa y a pregunta cuando tenemos el some. En este caso, ¿verdad? Ya tenemos nuestra oración afirmativa. I've got some apples in my basket and some water in my bottle. Y para convertirlo a negativo, obviamente necesitamos eh, poner una palabra negativa, que en este caso es el not, pero también vamos a cambiar el some por el any, así como aparece en la segunda oración. I haven't got any apples in my basket and nor any water in my bottle. Es como decir, no obtuve ninguna manzana o no tengo ninguna manzana en mi canasta, tampoco eh, tengo agua en mi botella, nor any water in my bottle. Y luego decíamos también que cuando tengamos una pregunta o cuando construyamos una pregunta, vamos a utilizar siempre el any. Have you got any apples in your basket? Have you got any water in your bottle? So in this case, we are going to use uh, the word any, not the word some. Now, in the last one, we have another um, positive sentences. Or in this case, we have a one a affirmative statement and the other one is a question. So in this one, it says, we had some visitors last weekend, but we didn't have any this weekend. In this sentence, we have two different um, forms. One is positive and the second part of the same statement is negative. Aquí utilizamos las dos formas, la positiva y la negativa. Tenemos en la primera parte, we had some visitors last weekend. Y luego, we, but we didn't have any this weekend. En la misma oración podemos utilizar ambas estructuras, la positiva y la negativa. O sea, el some y el any. And the last one is a question. And it says, have you got any rooms free for the 9th of September 20, uh, 30th?
Okay, in this case, we have the examples of some and any. Now, we are going to see something about several and number of. So in this case, we are going to have a, um, some information for all of the words that we have on the on the beginning when we are talking about the category, like in this case, some and any, several, a number of, and also enough. So in this case, we are going to see several and a number of. Okay, in this case, several and number of. These ones imply more than one, but less than a lot. They are not usually used in negative or interrogative structures, only in affirmative statements. Esto es lo contrario de los anteriores, del many, eh, del some y el any, que sí podían utilizarse en positivo, en negativo y en eh, question. In this case, this one is just for a uh, positive statements and they have like this kind of meaning in which you can imply que es más de uno, pero menos que un montón o menos que muchos. Así que hay una cantidad, o sea, eh, podemos decir que está en el medio de, de ser más de uno pero menos que un montón. ¿Cuánto es un montón? Pues la verdad no sabemos a, a, la cantidad exacta, pero está en medio de todo eso. Entonces, por eso es que son eh, cantidades que no estamos seguros de cuánto es, porque no hay un valor para esas cantidades. Y solo se utiliza en afirmaciones, o sea, solo en oraciones afirmativas. No en oraciones negativas ni en preguntas. We are going to see some examples. And we have number one. Let me move up a little bit here. And it says there are several books. There are several books. Or we can say there are a number of books by Jay-Z, Bloomerman, in our library. Several people. Or we can say a number of people said that they seen the missing child. Okay, in this case, we have like um, 
this kind of expressions, but we don't have like the security about the amounts of things. Hay muchos libros. En este caso, no tenemos una, eh, un número exacto. Pueden ser 10, 15, 20, 30, incluso 100. Um, several people, a number of people, una cantidad de personas, un grupo de personas, pero no sabemos de cuántas personas estamos hablando. And we're going to see the last one of this first category. That is the word enough. Vamos a ver la última de la primera categoría. And we have the word enough. And these ones are the neutral quantifiers. Estos son nada más los neutrales. Okay, enough implies a sufficient quantity. It is used in affirm affirmations, negations, and questions. Aquí habla de suficiente, de algo que ya no necesitamos más de eso. Um, it is on the group of WhatsApp. The document is on WhatsApp. I send the link to the group. I don't know if you are on the group. But I send this document there. But I'm going to do it again. I'm going to send the link again to the group of WhatsApp. Okay, in this case, eh, tenemos o decimos que es un, una cantidad suficiente. Ya no necesitamos más de esto. So in this case, we're going to, to use this word in the three forms, in affirmations, in negative statements, and also in questions. And now we are going to see some examples. And we have here, we can get tickets from the concert. I've got enough money now. Básicamente estamos diciendo, puedo obtener o puedo comprar los eh, tickets o los tiquetes para el concierto, tengo suficiente dinero. ¿A qué se refiere eso? A que tenemos la cantidad necesaria, incluso un poco más de lo que vamos a ocupar para comprar los tiquetes. I've got enough money now. Tenemos el dinero suficiente para poder comprarnos los tiquetes o las entradas. Have you got enough money for the tickets? So in this question is kind of different because we are asking if we have enough money or we have the money to buy the tickets. En la pregunta, ¿tienes suficiente dinero o lograste eh, tener el dinero suficiente para comprarlos o lograste la cantidad que necesitabas? Aquí estamos hablando si llegamos, si logramos obtener la cantidad necesaria para poder comprar las entradas.
Okay. Now, we're going to see the second group. Vamos a ver el grupo número dos. And this one is large quantity uh, quantifiers. Aquí vamos a hablar de grandes cantidades. Okay, in this case, we have the words much, many, lots of, plenty of, numerous, a large number of, and so on. Okay, again, we are going to have like um, the words and we are going to express uh, what are the uses or in which cases we can use this kind of words and in which quantities. Uh, because it is necessary that we have this kind of a idea about the a amount of things or in which cases we can use these expressions. So in this case, we're going to begin with much and many. And in this case, it is not like we are going to have the same thing as some and any. So we are going to see uh, why we are using them in the same uh, space. ¿Por qué los utilizamos juntos? Vamos a ver si es igual a la parte del Som y el any, donde uno era positivo y el otro era negativo. Vamos a ver cómo funciona esto del much y el many en este caso. So, in this case, we're going to begin with this one, much and many. And it says that much is used with non-account nouns. Empezamos. El much lo vamos a utilizar con nombres no contables. Always in the singular. Siempre de forma singular. Many is used with count nouns in the plural. Aquí ya vemos la diferencia de estos. Much is used with non-count nouns in singular. And eh, many is used with count nouns or... Eh, Countable nouns with uh, or in plural. Entonces, el much lo utilizamos con los nombres no contables en forma singular y el many lo vamos a utilizar con nombres contables de forma plural. So something that we need to, to keep in mind, in this case, is just like uh, a reminder. Um, much and many are not often used. In this case, we're talking about a modern uh, spoken English um, in affirmative statements, but they are very common um, in interrogative and negative context. Cuando hablamos de eh, la forma... Um, moderna no es tan how can we say um, no se utiliza tanto el much and many en oraciones afirmativas pero sí se utiliza de forma negativa y en preguntas pero esto es eh, básicamente cuando se hacen cambios verdad en, en el idioma en ese caso estamos hablando de la forma moderna it is not like we are going to use this kind of words 
in every statement. In this case, it is not very uh, like common to use this kind of words in positive statements, but we can do it with negative statements and also with questions. And we are going to see some examples. And in this one, um, we're going to have like, yes, we are going to do it in affirmative statements. It is not very common, but we are going to do it in this way. I have many reasons for thinking that this man is innocent So in this case, this phrase, I have many reasons for thinking that this many is innocent is acceptable, but um, it's rather formal. And most English speakers will more natural say, in this case, we are going to see, maybe we can create this kind of statements. Podemos nosotros crear estas eh, oraciones porque estamos acostumbrados a este tipo de estructuras, pero... Los nativos eh, hablantes no van a utilizar esta forma de oración. I have many reasons. Ellos van a utilizar otras frases como, por ejemplo, I'm going to do it like in this place and I'm going to change eh, this one. I need a star. So in this case, they can say, eh, I have plenty of, or we can say, I have a lot of, a lot of, a large number of reasons for thinking. So in this case, they are not going to use, I have many reasons. I have plenty of reasons. I have a lot of reasons. I have a large number of reasons. Another another word that we can improve. We are going to see another example and we are going to improve this uh, sentence. In this case, we have much whiskey is of very good quality. Much whiskey is of very good quality. So in this statement, it says that uh, it's technically acceptable, but not probably in modern English. In this case, uh, we're uh, saying that, that um, we can use this kind of statements. It is not like we are not going to do it, but it is not very common to listen or to hear this kind of statements when we are talking about the modern English. In some cases, you're going to find people that is talking this way. And as it says, it is acceptable, but it is not like very common right now. So in this case, in to say much whiskey is of very good quality, we can say the following thing. A lot of whiskey, a good proportion of whiskey or plenty of whiskey.
Ok, entonces, nosotros, ¿qué vamos a hacer y por qué nosotros necesitamos saber esto? Um, we are learning and we are acquiring these skills in English language. We are learning, we are gaining, we are practicing, we are making different things with the English language. Um, we have different structures, we have learned different things, um, and we are practicing those things, and they are good for um, our experience, but in some cases we need to change uh, some ideas that we have um, about different statements, like in this case. It is very probably that we can make questions like, I mean, we can make statements like, I have many reasons or much whiskey is of very good quality. We can use these uh, statements, but if we want to improve our level of English, we are going to change that. And we are going to use another words. There are a plenty of words that we can use and not the same words that we are learning in this kind of courses or uh, maybe we listen something and we learn something and in a different place so in this case we need to improve also the idea of the words that we are using entonces vamos a mejorar nuestras frases nuestra creación de oraciones cambiando algunas palabras que nosotros utilizamos con mucha frecuencia por otras que tal vez no utilizamos tanto, pero que nos van a dar una eh, mejor experiencia, ¿verdad? A la hora de hablar en inglés. Because in this case, it's like the language is all, eh, always changing and we have different things to learn during eh, the time that we are learning the, this kind of eh, topics. So in this case, we have like a very short information about large quantity quantifiers. Esta es bastante corto. Hasta ahí se queda la información de las palabras que vamos a utilizar para hablar de las cantidades grandes, que obviamente son algunas palabras que podemos mejorar y cambiar por otras. Okay, I'm going to add something else because I know that this one is kind of um, related to much and many. So I'm going to add something about plenty of numerals and a large number of. In this case, it's just like an explanation of this one. And then we are going to see the category number three. Okay, in this one, it says that this expression all mean more or less exactly the same. In the least, um, we are going to talk about formality and it's going to the most informal to the most informal way. And informal language is more appropriate in some dialogues a formal language in written documents. What is the point of this? All of these words means the same thing. Todas estas palabras, lots of, a lot of, plenty of, a large number of, and numerous, significa lo mismo, tiene el mismo significado, que puede ser más o menos exactamente lo mismo, más o menos lo mismo. Pero, ¿cuál es la diferencia con estas palabras? Comenzamos desde lo más informal hasta lo más formal. Lots of es el más informal. Y numerals es el más informal de estos. Básicamente, los más informales los vamos a utilizar en diálogos, en conversaciones 
y los más formales los vamos a utilizar en documentos escritos. Okay, now we are going to see the number three. In these last minutes of this session, we are going to um, see what is the third category. There are the small quantity quantifiers. And tomorrow we are going to see a recapitulation of this topic. And we are going to uh, have some um, examples more. We are going to talk about also a few or a few and little or a little we are going to say like um the difference between a few or few and little or a little then we are going to see some extra examples of these uh, words and we are going to have more examples then y vamos a ver también un poco sobre los quantifiers con conta nombres contables y no contables so we are going to make more examples tomorrow. So in that case, we are just going to um, see more examples, not just information. In this case, we are going to see some examples and then we are going to uh, end with the topic of the quantifiers tomorrow, I guess. So number three, a small quantity quantifiers. And these ones are few, a few, little, a little, not many, not much, a small number of. Estamos hablando de cantidades pequeñas. These quantifiers are normally only used in affirmative statements um, to which they give a negative coloring. En este caso, básicamente lo vamos a utilizar más que todo en oraciones afirmativas. I mean, so in this case, we are going to divide a little, a little, and not much. This one is a, a the first category and they are used with non-account nouns in this case singular 
Estos tres primeros, little, a little, and not much, se van a utilizar con nombres no contables. Next one, few, a few, and not many. These ones are used with count nouns in the plural. And we have the examples. Few people can speak more than three languages. A few paintings in this gallery are really good. There is a little point in trying to mend it. You will never succeed. And the last one, I've got a little money left. Let's go and have a drink. Okay, in this case, uh, we have uh, words that are very short and we can say, oh, they are very easy to use. But if you can see, we have, um... ah, no, don't... en este caso, eh, le voy a volver a mandar el, el documento al grupo de WhatsApp para que ustedes puedan accesar a él. Solo entran al enlace y directamente le va a mandar al documento. Ahí ustedes pueden entrar al documento cuantas veces quieran. Eh, no es necesario eh, descargar nada, sino que directamente les va a abrir el enlace porque está con Google Docs. Entonces, si ustedes tienen su, eh, su cuenta de Google en su celular, básicamente se los va a abrir ahí. Así que eh, no se preocupen por eso del, de, del documento. Pero se los voy a volver a mandar al grupo para que ustedes tengan acceso a él. So... Eh, unas cuantas palabras tienen muchos significados, tienen mucha información de la que nosotros debemos conocer, más que todo cuando estamos aprendiendo eh, un segundo idioma. Y ustedes lo pueden ver con estas palabras que estamos utilizando. They are very short words, but they have a lot of information that we need to, to learn about them. So, we are going to end the session here, and I guess, or I think, we are going to see each other tomorrow, but... 
we are going to see. So have a really good night and see you maybe tomorrow on the next session. So good night and see you. See you, teacher. See you. See you. See you. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Goodbye.